you know, a lot of these red pill ideologies and that, I think they are quite extreme. I think that I've said it before. I think that the red pill is everything but traditional. You know, I know that the red pill itself, I pointed out that it's bullshit like six months or so ago. So I see the only real way that they have is they're going to pivot into being like, you know, some sort of trad red pill ideology. So they sort of push it more towards religion. And it's very much not. It's just a failed ideology that needs to fucking die off. <clears throat> you know, it's based around fucking like tricks and deception and fucking like, you know, a bunch of sort of pseudoscience. Like, you know, oh, apes want this fucking thousands of years ago and the world hasn't changed since then. Everything's still exactly the same. You know, hypergamy and all this crap and a lot of that shit's just common sense. Like, of course, women want the best deal that they can have. Of course, women want to produce with a better man than they are, like a better man than they are a woman. Doesn't that make the most sense genetically? Like they're always trying to refine to get the best genetics. So they would try and refine with someone who is superior to them in a lot of ways. You know, not superior in that they're both humans, yes, but one who can do much more shit. That they want to reproduce the best genetics. That's fucking like pretty common sense. But then some guy will go on a fucking eight hour rant about it. Like that doesn't take you know, fucking degree in biology and a bunch of other shit to, to figure out. Like it's a lot of that shit's just common sense. Like it's the best, they want the best deal. That's normal. Like in business and things like that, everyone wants the best deal and everyone wants the deal better than what they qualify for. That's the game. Like that's the issue in the real world. Guys qualify for X and women qualify for X, but women want multiples more than what they qualify for because they're trying to produce the best genetics and live the best life. And then on top of that, in the West specifically, they've pushed a lot of shit that they all need to be millionaires and massive consumers. So the normal guy who doesn't really have any of that shit, but he might still be a good man on like, you know, 60K a year or whatever. It's harder for him to compete with the idea that she has, that she deserves all of this shit, you know, that she deserves much better than she is. He might be like efficiently a five out of 10, Maybe he's in good shape, but like his money isn't great and all this other stuff, but he's still like, you know, a good man that's a five or even a six out of 10. And now the girl that he would normally get, she has the ideas that she can get like a seven or an eight out of 10 because maybe one of those guys replies to her DMs or maybe one of the guys fucked her or flew her out somewhere or something like that. And now she thinks that that's like normal because he lied to her and told her that he wanted something long-term. So now she's looking for someone of that quality. You know, man's biggest fucking enemy is man. Man, all this shit is created by men. Like all of these issues in the fucking dating market, things like that, that's created by guys. You know, it's... When I'm talking to women and things like that, I don't fucking like, you know, bullshit on that I want some massive relationship. I don't fucking talk to guys that have, like girls that have boyfriends. I don't try and fuck girls. Like I don't try and fuck girls if they got a husband. I don't try and fuck girls if they got a boyfriend. I don't try to dunk on the guys that uh, fucking like, you know, that she talks to and call them all fucking trash. I don't tell them, you know, that I'm better than everyone that she's ever had because it doesn't help like society as a whole. It just damages women. I could fly women every day to, or at least every week to here to Dubai and then just send them back completely fucked up. But why would I do that? Like that's just poisoning the well now. Like it's shitting in the well that everyone has to drink out of. I don't program people to be massive consumers. I don't try to tell women to, you know, that they should only fucking run around with millionaires. If I sit with a girl after I fucked her or something and I know that it's not going anywhere, I'll generally like try to fucking give her some advice for how she could get sort of what she wants and who she is, like who she qualifies for. I think man needs to be with women and educator. Like it's not about trying to deceive and just like get what you can. See, a lot of guys, that's all they think about. Like, what can I get? Like the very concept of like helping someone out, the opposite sex, that doesn't really fucking do anything for them. They just see women as like sex toys. <laughs> it's because they watch so much porn. They forget that it's still like, you know, they're still dealing with a person as well on the other end. A lot of guys, yeah, they're just watching so much porn or like, you know, they're really hypersexualized, specifically in the West because they've got the music, the TV, all this, this stuff's very like sexually suggestive. So on their head, like in their mind, they're just completely fucking like sex maniacs. Like it's the biggest thing to them. The concept of, you know, finding a partner or like, you know, having a companion or having things outside of sex that doesn't really do it for them. 
because sex itself is just the most refined dopamine like hit that they can get. Like it's not as exciting to think about, you know, having a companion. It's not as exciting thinking about having someone that has your back or someone that you can talk to when you get home and like, you know, bounce ideas off and talk about your day and things like that. That doesn't really like in the head mean anything because it doesn't give you a quick thrill. But that's all the shit that matters in the long term. Like that's all the shit that fucking like, you know, you'll think about later. You won't think about the girl that you fucked like, you know, and it was just a one night stand. Like I've fucking got hundreds of those and I can't even remember 95% or more. If someone put a fucking like list of the photos of girls that I fucked, I would only probably remember like two or 3% of them. And I wouldn't remember the names of like 98% or more. Cause none of that shit really matters. Like it doesn't matter how like, you know, the one night stands and all that sort of crap. That's just like, you know, <laughs> it's like doing blow for a night. Like, I don't sit there and think about all the fucking, like, nights that I spent on blow. Like, it's, there's been too many, but they just merge together. It's not like, you know, a foundational thing. Thing. It's not like, you know, it's like gym sessions. I've never regretted a gym session. Like, you, you still have to go train and things like that, even if you're not feeling great. You still, you still got to train and things like that. But I have had one night stands and things that I've regretted because the girl's been fucking like toxic which she's fucking started messaging other people or done shit like that. Because you're dealing with a person, like they can be fucked up. You're inviting someone else into your life, essentially a lot of you without vetting them. Some of you will just go fuck girls straight off Tinder. Like you don't even vet them. You're just happy to have them in your house. Some fucking like unknown person just walking around. Could do anything or could accuse you of anything. Like you have to be a lot more careful these days. You know, if nothing else, the Tate shit should have taught you that you have to be careful with women. It's not to be fearful. Fearful and careful are very different. You have to be aware that shit can happen. You have to fucking like, you know, be just more careful in general. It doesn't mean that you sit there and fucking like in a panic, like one of these nerds that have written in all these red pill Bibles that women are out to get you. And, you know, you have to fucking like, he who cares less wins, don't get attached, you know, just get what you can. Don't think long term, you know, you gotta be the one that cares less. That's all dumb. Like, those are just tricks. Those are little fucking tricks like the nofap guy. The nofap guy sits around and fucking thinks about not wanking and he thinks about it a lot. And the guy who has sex, he doesn't think about not wanking because he just has sex and he picks up all the other attributes on the way. The guy who fucking like just has healthy relationships, the guy who's doing shit, the guy who's like, you know, built his foundation, he's got his foundational fitness, He's got his foundational frame and boundary. He knows who he is, but he also knows the type of woman that likes him and the type of woman that he likes. He has like fucking, you know, he can call out bad behavior. He can withdraw his attention. He's not afraid to lose. He's not afraid to be like, that's not fair. Like, I don't like being treated like that. If you keep it up, I'll fucking leave. And he actually leaves if he has to. He's not scared to withdraw his attention. He's not scared to fucking lose. Like he's not scared to care either. He's happy to care about, you know, things that matter. And he knows that in caring, he, he gets to experience a lot more. And yes, that can be more downside as well, of course, but that's life. Like you can't go through life not caring about shit because then you're just like a droid, like a robot. <laughs> that's not really much of a fucking life. And the longer you go down that path, the harder it will be to turn it around and start to care about shit. And if you don't care about things, like you're not really going to have shit that sticks around the long term. Like it's a red pill and things like that. It's not about having game or tricks or all this sort of crap. The biggest ROI is just being the fucking guy. You know, the guy who has the foundation that I talk about a zillion times. The foundational money is the last one, but it doesn't mean that you're a millionaire. You know, it could easily just mean that you're always finding a way to level up your skill and it might just be a trade or something, but you're always increasing it as best you can. Maybe you have a route to get to 100K, at like, you know, 30 or 35. And that's like, that's fine. Like that still puts you in the top, I don't know, probably 10% of earners, things like that. So it does, that's not a bad thing. You know, it's the very concept that every man needs to be in the 1% or giving advice to the 1%. Like a lot of the red pill shit, you know, have 10 girlfriends and do all this shit and you can just fucking like tell them all that you're cheating. That's bullshit. Like for, <laughs> for the 99% of guys that are watching this, they're not gonna be in the 1%. They can't get away with the shit that someone can get away with if they're worth fucking like 10 or $20 million. But then again, the girl is going to be with them specifically for money. 
because she's going to expect money out of them and she's going to expect to treat the guy like a trick. She's willing to put up with this sort of behavior, yes, to a degree, but she's going to want shit out of it as well, like financial gains. So the very concept that these nerds can have a bunch of girlfriends and all this stuff at once and they're cheating on them all and they're doing whatever the fuck they want, they better be providing a lot of fucking monetary value back. It's going to be expensive. Like, you're going to have to fly around and do a lot of shit to make her feel special. You know, that's often not a thing. You can have two girls or like you can have... I'll say this is a master level. Obviously, it's not for everyone. But you can have one girl and you can have like, you know, threesomes or you can have her ultimately finding girls for you and you can have her like, you know, you do it together and maybe you do it alone sometimes, but more together. But that's like, you know, that needs to be impeccable frame and that needs to be you saying in the in the beginning that that's what you want. Like you want a girl who is down to fuck other girls, essentially. And then over time, she'll see that you're not like fucking a thirsty guy that's just going to fall in love with the next piece of pussy that you get. And then she'll start to trust you and the concept that you could fuck other girls, it doesn't really matter to her that much anymore because she's like, I trust this guy now. He's not thirsty. Like I've seen him with other girls and he doesn't fucking like get infatuated with them. He's not DM, DMing a zillion girls. You know, he's not like fucking just led by his cock everywhere. It's like the guy who walks into the buffet, but he's already eaten. He could eat again if the food's good, but he's not like in a fucking state of panic. Versus the starving guy who just trips over all the tables and runs through the buffet and just makes a fool of himself. You know, so of course on a master level, if you have impeccable frame, which is the biggest thing, you have honesty, you screening for a specific girl and you're saying, you know, you want to have fucking threesomes with girls and things like that, that's very possible. You know, it's possible that, you know, you do it together and she finds girls, she gets on like the dating apps and things like that and finds girls, it's very possible. But that requires impeccable frame and fucking dick control. And you gotta understand that it's not about you. A lot of that shit, it's about the woman. A lot of the women wanna be with the woman, you're just there. Like, you know, it's predominantly like girls that are by and things like that. It's bigger that the women do most of the shit. You know, if you're ever with a girl and she's by or whatever, and she finds a girl in the club or whatever, like the girl's mostly there for her because girls can get dick at any time. You know, the girls, the girl and the girl, that's the biggest thing. And then you're just there and then you're involved. But it's not like, you know, it's not some fucking like porn, pornography thing in your head that this is going to happen and this is going to happen. It's all going to be about me. Initially, especially in like, you know, the beginning and especially if it's one of the first times that she's done it, it has to be mostly about the girls and you have to make your girl feel secure and safe and things like that. And that it's about her enjoying it and that you're fucking like, you know, you're there and you're sharing it together. If you jump on and just fucking like take over and just treat it like some fucking like cheating session, like you're giving your girl pretty much no attention and all this shit's happening and she thinks, oh, this isn't fun now, you know, I'm not really included, all this issue. And then you ran into a massive issue because now your fucking like dick controls in jeopardy. Like this matters too much to you now. Like this means too much. The more shit means to you, the more you won't get it. That's a massive thing in life too, a cheat code. The more, if it matters too much to you, it's you're very often not going to get it. You know, it's like the guy who turns into a business deal and you can just tell that he needs it so bad that he can't, yeah, I can't give it to him now. Like I can't let him have it. I watched a fucking clip once where Dan Bilzerian was talking about like, you know, losing money in poker. And if he loses money in poker to a guy who doesn't have shit, that hurts him more. If he loses money to a billionaire, a guy who's worth a hundred million, he loses a million to him. He doesn't care about that because it doesn't mean anything to the guy. But it hurts people to think like, you know, that the guy needs it a lot. Like, you know, if, if he loses a million dollars to a guy and that's the, essentially the guy's like, you know, only worth a few hundred K, that that means a lot to the guy now. Like, you know, he's, he's made that guy's fucking lie. The guy's gonna go out and buy a Lamborghini and now the guy thinks like, that hurts. Like Bill Zarian said, he's like, I hate to lose to a guy that doesn't have shit. Now it matters. Like it, it means a lot to him. It hurts more. That's a real thing. Like it's a real thing. You can just sense it. And a chick can sense it too. You need the pussy too bad. Like you want this fucking pussy so bad and, and now she's not going to give it to you. Versus the guy who's just cool about it. And then she thinks like he could take it or leave it. Now, now I want to fuck the guy. Like that's just a lot of how, how shit works. Unless it's your girl. And then, you know, it's a good thing to show your intentions, things like that. But especially in the early stages, you don't want to, you know, overplay your hand or be desperate or like, you know, you haven't been there before. It's like a guy who's on the jet, business class even, and he starts taking his phone out and filming everything. 
it's just obvious that he hasn't really been there or this isn't that normal for him. And it comes across, you know, a nice table or something and someone's filming the food nonstop. Like obviously they don't come to this sort of thing that often. So people catch on to that. And it's, women are much the same. Women are much more perceptive with men than men, like much more perceptive of status, things like that. 